So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining this both. My name is Jean-François Denise. I am part of the Java FX in Builder development team. Um, I am based in France. And today, I'm going to do a, a very detailed presentation on the scene builder. Actually, uh, I am going to do a general session on the scene builder tomorrow. Um, the schedule is a bit reversed. I would have preferred to have my tomorrow session to be today because I will cover general topics. Uh, today, I will try to do my best to focus on some technical aspects of the scene builder. So I will not do a lot of slides. I have two or three slides just to load you with some context. And I will jump directly on some demos. So the safe harbor for me to be safe with this presentation and the content of it. So one slide to quickly present the scene builder. I guess that now you, you saw it in the various presentation yesterday and, and this morning. Uh, some people presented the scene builder. Two slides just to load some context on FXML and CSS that are really the two legs of the scene builder. And finally, uh, I, will, I will do some, uh, some, I hope, interesting demos. So um, what is the scene builder? So the scene builder is a, a visual tool to help you create JavaFX UI. So the 1.0 release has been issued in August this year, working on Mac and Windows. And today, we start to put our next to come release, the one-on-one -on -one release, on OTN. So you can download the latest, greatest scene builder release that works on Linux, Mac with the addition of Mountain Lion and Windows 8 Beta. So one sentence to summarize what is a scene builder, it's a graphical FXML editor. This is really what it is. So I take the opportunity of this presentation to tell you that we are looking for participants for a usability study that will take place uh, in October. So if you are interested, I put there the URL, but come and see me, give me your business card of your name, and the people that are uh, organizing this will contact you. Um, OK, so for hyper quick introduction. So the survival kit, two slides to, to give you some, um, some, some background. So. Um, as I said, the, the input and output format of the scene builder is FXML. So FXML now is a popular language uh, in JavaFX world. So really what it is, it's an XML language to uh, serialize Java beans. Uh, but in the context of JavaFX, it has been a bit reduced, and it's used to serialize portion of your scene graph. It is very good at that. So obviously, all the structure of the JavaFX library, the nodes, the containers, the various elements are good, uh, are compliant with FXML. So you can reference all your JavaFX classes from an FXML document. But you, uh, if you extend the platform by extending containers, buttons, whatever, and if you follow some uh, design patterns that are well documented on the web, but it's quite obvious, some public constructors, getters, and setters, uh, you will be able to reference your custom type from FXML. And there is a new kind of pattern that we are currently in the process of uh, discovering is uh, what they should be in order to load your custom type in Scene Builder. So uh, I will show you some. Uh, it's the beginning of this. So I will show you um, uh, how to do that. One notion I want to introduce is the notion of FXML controller class. So in the FXML, you have your layout. I would say the static layout, the structure of your UI. And there is a bridge between these aspects and the application logic, and the bridge to connect your event handler to inject your node inside your Java code. This is the role of the FXML controller class. So um, I will show you uh, uh, in, in demos uh, some very simple controller class to get, to get the point. But it's, it's quite it's straightforward. One important point that I will not demonstrate today, but will cover tomorrow, is the ability to include FXML file inside FXML file. 
and it's obviously a great requirement. We don't want to duplicate our layout. You want to reuse some headers, or some footers, so you can construct your layout like a template and fill with some included FXML files. So FXML, very important for the scene builder. Second aspect, uh, it's CSS. So in the scene builder, we are not editing uh, CSS. We are using your CSS editor. We are not generating CSS. But what we do is that we render CSS. It's an important aspect of it. Because uh, you will see that perhaps you are already doing some CSS with JavaFX. And to see what is the impact of changing the value of a declaration, you need to go the whole development steps. Compile, run, observe that the padding is not right, change the rule, and do it again. With Scene Builder, we have immediate rendering of your CSS rule as soon as you save them. So <coughs> I just want to, to give you some basic knowledge of CSS in JavaFX, and we will see that in action in the Scene Builder. So all the controls of the platform comes pre-styled with a default look and feel that is named Caspian. You as a developer or as a styler, you can add your rules um, located in files. You can add them at the scene level, or you can locate uh, your CSS files. You can locate your rules inside a given container. So it's a nice way to isolate your rules uh, according to uh, the containment of your application. Another way ability, another way to set style on a node, it's by inline styling it. Each node has a style property, similar to the web, uh, where you can directly add a CSS de declaration. So we can already see that we have three origin of styling. The defaults that come, out, that come out of the box, the CSS files you can add, and the inline you add directly to the node. So there is an order of precedence between these three in line that is stronger style sheets that override the theme. So in this CSS uh, overriding model, where does bin property fit? A lot of property in JavaFX can be set thanks to CSS or thanks to API call. So uh, keep in mind that all CSS you do is overriding uh, your API call. So the API call sits in between the theme and the style sheets. And this is really what we want. We want to be able, uh, from a CSS file, to change the behavior or at least the style of uh, the application. But you will see that Scene Builder help you figure out from where your style comes from. We can see that it can become quickly very complex. OK, so I'm done. So now, <coughs> demo of the scene builder. So for this demo, I am using uh, NetBeans 7.3. Or you can use the dev build. The beta is not yet out. It will come out in few, in few days or hours. I don't know. But it, it, it will come quickly. So I have selected, I have seven uh, patterns I would like to, to cover, and there is some that are very important too that I will cover tomorrow. So if you come tomorrow to my session, it will be uh, uh, it will be not the same content. So the first topic I want to cover is CSS. So there I have uh, the main window of Scene Builder. I'm not going to introduce it, but mainly on the left you have a library from where you can drag and drop content in the middle and. Uh, according to what you have selected on the right, you can set properties of, the, of your currently selected element. So let me add a button. And uh, one way to change the look and feel of a button is by setting a property. So in order to change the text of a button, you can use the text fill property. So now I have a nice pink uh, or purple text field. So the, the second way is the style sheets. So I have written, let me show you, uh, a very, very ultra simple rule uh, that is going to style any button located in my um, 
portion of thin graph. So why any button? Because I am using as a selector the button style class. Any button has by default a button style class. So uh, there I am redefining the background color, the text field, and the font size of my button. OK, so I'm going to add um, to my design this style sheet. So I am selecting the parent of this button, its container, and set its style sheet's property. So as soon as you add uh, style sheets, we apply CSS rule. So that's why the button has been immediately rendered. So you can navigate from the scene builder to the CSS file. So for my CSS edition, I am using dash code, but according to your system configuration, uh, it will start your CSS editor. So the file that opens your CSS extension. So if I am changing in the file, the color of the background of this button, you have immediate rendering. So this is what I wanted to tell you, is that it's very efficient to style uh, incrementally your, your content. So the last uh, way to style is by, by using the style property of the node itself. So there I'm going to change the text field to be a nice green. Okay. So now, if I ask, uh, if someone, sorry, look at this content, it's quite difficult to understand from where this green come from, from where the yellow come from, and so on. So um, we try to help you there in the scene builder. First of all, by um, in the inspector, it's where you find the bin properties. Each time a property is ruled, is overridden by CSS, we make it read only and we offer you a button to navigate to where it has been defined. So the font, if I am clicking on it, I am going to navigate to the file because the font has been defined inside the demo.css file. But the text field, I'm navigating not to a file but to a property because what is overriding the text file is the style property. So it can start to become a bit complex. So that's why in Scene Builder 1.1, we have just introduced um, a summary view uh, that provides you a, 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 an exact view of what is rendered and from where the value comes from. So you get it from view, show CSS analyzer. So um, in this panel, that is just display now, what do we have? We have this big table. And this big table is composed of a first column that contains all the CSS property you can set on the currently selected node. For each of them, if you click on it, and if you have access to uh, online CSS documentation, mainly if you are on the, on the web, uh, you will be directed to uh, information on the syntax of the property. So um, with SceneBuilder 1.0, you were a bit alone. How I am going to style this stuff? What are the rules that apply? What is the syntax? So now from SceneBuilder, you have um, much more information now. So this, this was the first column. Then we have our four uh, origin of styling. The defaults, so the Caspian style, the inspector, this column, is actually what you have set from the inspector of what you have loaded from your FXML file. Style sheets, so what come from the CSS files, and finally, inline styles. So there we can see that the yellow background is winning because it has a blue background. The cell has a blue, uh, has a blue background on it, and it is overriding the gray radial uh, gradient oriented uh, Caspian look and feel. So something that is interesting is that you can filter the, the table uh, according to property name. And I want to, to focus on this one there, the FX text field that has actually the four properties set. So 
it has a default color. I have set thanks to the inspector. I have overridden thanks to style sheets and thanks to inline styles. So I have a kind of good view, synthetic view of what is going on there. And this table is dynamic. If I am removing the style there, you have inline styles that have been removed from your table and everything try to keep in sync with the CSS runtime. So what you see there is what you get at runtime. We are not evaluating the rules in a different way. This is exactly the way it is done at runtime. Okay, so I am done with this first aspect of the CSS analyzer. There is also a second issue when you want to style CSS component. Sometimes the skin structure is a bit difficult to, to understand. So if I take the example of a scroll pane, a scroll pane is composed of um, two scroll bars. So how do you do to style sub-element of it? How do I do to, what is the rule I need to write to style this corner there, this turn, this track, this arrow? Uh, it's not very obvious to do, uh, to do that. So we have a tool in the scene builder that is a CSS picking. I click on it, and now each time I will click on a node, first it will select it, make it a yellow, and it will update the styleable path. So the styleable path, this path there, is if you want um, a selector that you could use to style this exact node. So um, what I'm going to do is to use the CSS analyzer menu and copy this styleable path. I don't even want to know what it is. I just copy it. Oh, by the way, I can remove the filter there. And when you click on a node, you see all the properties that are linked to this node. So I have copied the styleable path. I am going to navigate to uh, my CSS file. And I'm going to copy it in my file and add declaration to it. So I see that I can set the background color of it. So let's change to be a nice pink. Let me save. And instantaneously, you have the part of your skin that is styled. So it's a nice way to understand how skins can be styled. So you can do it with the CSS picking tool, but you can also do it by discovering it using the styleable path navigation feature. So there, I can discover all the styleable nodes inside my skin. So let's select the vertical scroll bar, and there is um, this decrement button that contains a decrement arrow. So now I can copy this styleable path in order to change the color, whatever, of the arrow. So, okay, so you, you, you get the, the capabilities of this feature. So it's a new feature, just went out, waiting for your feedback on the forums. Uh, give us what you like, what you don't like, and we, we will try to make change according to your valid use case. Okay, so uh, it's done for this first demo. So I'm going to do a smooth transition from uh, CSS to uh, structure and layout. So something that I really like with CSS is the ability to set background image. Uh, <coughs> There, I have this root anchor pane that is composed of uh, a motif, one finger that has been replicated. If you wanted to do that with nodes, you wanted to align them to have the image to resize uh, when you change the width and height of your container, it will, uh, trust me, uh, imply a lot of logic. So um, if I am opening the CSS analyzer, we can see that on any region, you can set an FX background image. Let me navigate to its um, syntax. So um, the value of a background image, it's a URL that is a relative to the current CSS file. So there I have um, a simple icon, and by default, there is a repeat X and Y, so uh, all my background is covered with this image. So 
nice way to add image to your layout. Second way, and you saw already it in various demos, it's by importing an uh, image. So as soon as you import image, now you have a node. So you can select it, duplicate it, transform it. You have much more, you, you have much more control on your image. Some things that you can't do, obviously, when it's a background inside a CSS rule. So uh, a quick patterns, but nice to see that you can, uh, you have multiple ways according to your requirements, choose the right, uh, the, the right way. Don't try to cover the backgrounds with thousands of nodes. Oh, I wanted to mention that um, the scene builder is written in JavaFX. So this pattern there, you see, it's in fact the background of this region that has been replicated. Just mentioning. Okay. Um, how to add menu to um, your application, menu bar? So this is the design I want to create. So I don't know if you notice, but each time I'm creating a new uh, FXML document inside Scene Builder, I have a default container. And by default, we have the anchor pane. I will cover in detail the good features, the good properties of Anchor Pane, but sometimes this is not what you want. Sometimes you want to start with a V-box, with a border pane, according to your need. So um, there is multiple ways to do it, but um, one simple way is to create it directly, create a new document with a border pane, let's say. Why am I choosing a border pane? Because it does work very well with menu bar. I take this menu bar and <coughs> look at the content. You have the drop target uh, according to where I can drop it. And if I am dropping it and, uh, to the top of my border pane, my menu bar is automatically stretched to fill all the width of my container. Furthermore, if I preview in a window, previewing in a window it's the way you do when you want to play and see how your application is going to resize. So now if I am resizing it, I can see that the menu is properly following my window. And this comes for free with the border pane. So what can we do with menu? Um, you can obviously change the name of menu. One very interesting property I want to notice is the ability we have in JavaFX to make your application to look like a native application and move the menu to the system menu bar. On Mac systems, you, you never see application with embedded menu bar, okay? So it's uh, delegated to the operating system. So there is this property, use system menu bar, trust me, it's a bit too small there. And now if I am previewing in a window, my menu has been moved there to my system menu. So that's very cool. That's the way we do in Scene Builder to have our menu be in the system menu on Mac. We don't do that on Windows, obviously. We keep it inside the, the main. This is the way it is. So a nice little property that do a lot. So uh, to add content to a menu, uh, take some content, drag and drop directly in the menu. You have separator, you have uh, check menu, all the API, all the, uh, <coughs> sorry, all the nodes you find in the FX API, you can drag and drop. But really a menu, what its finality, uh, why do we have menu? It's to fire actions. So I'm going now to show you how to call some Java code from Scene Builder. First I'm going to save this file inside my uh, NetBeans project. Inside this NetBeans project, I already have an FXML controller class. We will see it, it's very, very simple in my case. So to set a controller class, to attach this controller class to your FXML, you select the root of your layout, go to code, and there you have this controller class property. You can type it by hand, full name, package, and class name, but um, 
we do our best and look in your folders around the FXML where you saved it. And if we find some compliant Java source file, we don't work on class. We just work on your source file. If we, if we, we do some pattern matching to extract the name and so on. So you can set it. Once you have set this class, you can select your menu item and set an event handler on, on action. This is what will be called when you click on the menu. So there again, we look at the Java source file and try to extract some methods that are candidates uh, to be called from on action or on mouse event on all your event handlers. So there, let, let's assume I am calling close. I can save it. Let's look at what I saved. So here this is the part of FXML. So here you have this on action attribute that contains the name of my method. I will show you that it is a method. And at the root of my element, I have this controller class that has been set. So the FX controller attribute is all the time set on the root of your uh, UI. Menu controller. So very straightforward. It's a simple class that contains three methods, each of them being annotated with an at FXML. This is the only requirement. Um, there, there is another requirement, actually. You need to have a proper signature, or you have an empty signature, or you have an event that is of the type of your event handler. I was an on action event, so it's an action, sorry, action event parameter. So you get it, there is nothing special there except this at FXML annotation. Okay, pop up controls. What are there? Very simple demo there. Um, it's tooltip and context menu. Everybody, or oh, a lot of people actually, are adding uh, tooltip and context menu. So how do you do that? It's a matter of, um, so in the library, you will find the tooltip. You can drag and drop it directly on the label or in the hierarchy. Once you have added a label to uh, any control, you can add to any control. Uh, you can then set your text. And the only way to visualize the tooltip is by previewing, as I did previously. Because the mouse event in your content view are not reaching your nodes. We are trapping all the mouse events in, a, in order to design, to, 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 to design your layout. So um, we will see how the mouse events are reaching your nodes in preview. But let me add the context menu. Again, just simple drag and drop. And you have the same structure. You can add menu item to it, and you carry on. So let's pre preview it. Tooltip, context menu. OK. So very straightforward, but worth mentioning. Perhaps it's the kind of thing we don't see uh, at first when we, we start Scene Builder. So charts. What can you do with charts in Scene Builder? So, <coughs> First of all, you, you, you will find all the charts in the uh, library. So I'm going to drag and drop a pie chart. So first thing, you can resize them. And let me add a line chart. I'm going to put one on top of the other. So the first thing we mentioned, we can see quite quickly, is that a chart without content is not so cool. At design time, uh, it's even worse because all the interesting properties you can set to tweak the look and feel of your chart. Do I have a legend? Do I have a title? What are this color? What are all the behavior, all the look and feel of your chart is only available with data. So in the scene builder, we took that into consideration and we have uh, a feature to inject sample data inside your layout. So to do that, you go to view and show sample data. And this feature applies to charts, 
but it also applies to table view, table column, tree view, list view, whatever uh, data-oriented containers or controls that make sense when they are filled full of data. So now I can change, and I am happy, uh, this to be on the left. I can make the legend to be visible, not visible. So you get it. Something that you can't do without this sample data. So sample data is not stored in your FXML. Only the properties you set in the inspector are stored. So it's just runtime information. So at preview, you get, again, uh, some data that is generated just to get a feel of what is going on. And tomorrow, I will do that with tree view, list view, and to create a, a kind of business form application. OK, now I am, uh, and what time is it? So I, I still have 15 minutes. So I'm happy because I have a very important topic to cover. Now it's custom type. And I have time for it. So <coughs> custom type. So with uh, 1.0, we have, so with SceneBuilder 1.0, we have um, added the ability for you to load your custom type inside SceneBuilder. So it was there, it was working, we have fixed some bugs, and now in 1.1, we consider that the features start to be more mature, but it's just the beginning of the feature. So you will see that you can't yet import directly your custom type graphically from SceneBuilder. I will have to update my FXML file, but SceneBuilder cops with your manual edit, no problem. So <coughs> in this uh, demo, I have written a very simple custom type that is composed of a list of labels, each of them having various font and colors, and the custom type exposed one single property, the custom text property. When you set this property, all the labels are going to be updated with the content of the text. It's really a um, simple context to, uh, to highlight the custom type feature. Furthermore, I'm going to demonstrate two things. First thing is how to use SceneBuilder to create your custom type. Today, you have multiple paths to create custom type. Do you go the control and skin way? There is no control SDK today. It's, so what do I do? Do I extend VBox and do whatever I want in my VBox? So it's a, a new land there. So I'm going to show you a pattern on how to create the UI of your custom type using SceneBuilder. <coughs> then we will see how to use in custom type in SceneBuilder. So my custom type. So it is composed of an FXML file. Uh, very VBox that contains five labels. What we can notice is that the, I have named the container so um, with this FXID property. With an FXID property, you can provide a name, and this name has to match exactly a private field annotated with at FXML inside your controller class. So this is a way to, set, to say to the FXML loader, these nodes, I want to have them injected in my controller class, because I will use them at one time. So I wanted to update my labels. Um, and that's about it, actually. I'm just going to do uh, something a bit special when saving this layout. I'm going to use this menu there and ask to use FX root construct. So the FX root construct, uh, if you are a FXML expert, you already know what it is. But mainly, it's a way to tell to the FXML loader that the root it's going to find in the FXML file is not the actual root. The root of the design will be set at one time by the Java code. So you can see it as a template of root. OK, we, we, we will see that. So I can save my design. And let's look at the custom type, at the, sorry, at the FXML of it. So this is what I, the FX root construct is really a template of the root element. There is its type. It has to be of type VBox, but it can be a subclass of VBox. 
and our custom type will subclass VBox. So then you can set all the property you can generally set on a VBox. What about the custom type itself? So it is extending VBox. In, it has this property to get and set its custom type, its custom text, sorry. And when you set the text, it has a side effect to access to the controller class that is associated to the FXML file and call also a set custom text to convey this text to the UI layers. How do we get a reference onto the controller? I'm going to show you that now. So when the custom type is created, I am calling the load method, that is the method I just wrote for this demo. And this is where the, the interesting piece is actually. Is I'm creating an FXML loader, and I am telling that the root now is this instance. So when the FXML loader is going to load this layout, it is going to fill the list of children of this instance with all that has been loaded from the FXML file. So all the labels are going to be put inside this custom type. One very important uh, call, and that will become a pattern uh, to have proper uh, custom type in SceneBuilder, you have to set the class loader that loaded the custom type um, inside the loader. Because the loader, by default, is using the system class pass. And, when, and you will see that when we are going to load your type in SceneBuilder, the system class pass doesn't contain your class. It contains the class of the scene builder. So we are creating class loader uh, with your jars, with your class, and attach them to each of your loaded uh, custom type. So in order to resolve this FXML uh, file, we need uh, to set the class loader onto the FXML loader. Then we set the location, we load, quick assertion to check that the root that has been returned is actually this, because this is what I have asked to the FXML loader. And to get a reference onto the controller, you get loader.getController. And you have this reference we wanted to get. So I am done with, let me clean and build it. Clean and build, sorry. <coughs> so the step I want to cover now is how I am going to reference this custom type inside a, a, an FXML. That is my main layout, if you wish, that reuse uh, this control, this component. So as I said, I can only do that by hand. So when you want to add your custom type, you need to add a processing instruction import with the package of your custom type. The same way we do for uh, JavaFX runtime uh, classes. Then. You can use the name of your class and use it as an XML element. So there, in my list of anchor pane children, I have this custom pane, custom type, sorry, uh, XML element. And that's it. Let's see how Scene Builder is going to react to this content. OK, so as soon as we detect that there is some custom type in your FXML, we prompt you with this huge dialogue that ask you uh, <laughs> a lot of things yeah, that provide you a lot of information, but mainly is asking you for your binaries. So I'm going to set up um, the class pass. You can add jars or folders according to your packaging. And in the dist directory there, I should have my custom type jar, Ooh, strangely named. Um, and then I'm going to apply the class pass. And I can see now, perhaps you, you didn't notice, and I didn't show you actually, that before to apply the class pass, my hierarchy there was empty. And when you successfully uh, load elements, they appear in uh, there. So I see that as a black box, actually. So this is my custom type. It's composed of a set of nodes, but I can't navigate inside it. It's a leaf. It's really like a button. So uh, I can move it, and 
<coughs> you can change property. You, it works exactly the same way as any FX uh, uh, node. And what is interesting in SceneBuilder is that uh, we introspect your, your custom types. And all the properties that we can't put in some sections that we know, we put in the miscellaneous uh, section there. So um, we offer the ability at design time to configure your custom type. So there, I am going to change with this well-known sentence. And if your custom type is well-designed, it should react uh, at design time also, uh, according to, to your requirements. It's not mandatory, but uh, in this case, we have uh, a, contain, uh, a custom component that has some design time capabilities. So let me save the FXML and show you what did we save. So um, now the custom type has, has been extended with uh, some properties. So the custom text properties that I have set and layout text, layout Y, because I have moved the uh, custom type inside my anchor pay. So your custom type are treated the same way I others. So it's just a matter of following some design patterns. What do we see also there? We see, uh, and uh, NetBeans will fix this, um, we have some special, not too much, it's three, four, uh, scene builder specific processing instruction that are completely ignored at long time by the FXML loader for us to persist information you set at design time. So next time when I will reload this FXML file, I will perhaps prompt you for security reason. I know, sorry. <laughs> the scene builder will prompt you for security reason um, to accept to load this custom type, but you will not have to set the path. We stored relative, all the paths, all the image uh, CSS file you can add, we save them relative to the current FXML file. And uh, what I wanted to say, it's today considered by NetBeans as an invalid processing instruction, but in the 7.3 uh, release, it will not. It will be just ignored. ignored. Quick highlight, perhaps on 7.3, we have this nice uh, completion inside the FXML editor. It was not the case in 7.2, so now, all the attributes, all the static constraints you can set on a given node, you can do that manually inside uh, the FXML editor. And as you saw, uh, you will do your development in some, some time in the scene builder and sometime in XML, because sometimes we are very effective at just uh, copy, pasting XML element, uh, changing attributes, values, and instantaneously, the scene builder is reflecting your change. So do manual change, save it, scene builder reloads that in your, uh, in your content view. Okay, so it seems that I have time to show you, and this one is very important, but <coughs> there is uh, a lot of samples, not a lot, but few sam some samples that are present with scene builder 1.1. And this one is one of them. So I really advise you to go and have a look to the code of this uh, sample. It shows you how to create an application that loads multiple FXML and replace the content of the theme. Because an application is never or not often composed of a single page. You have this workflow where you go from one page to go to the, you go to the other one. So we had a lot of questions saying, with FXML, how can I do that? With SceneBuilder, how can I do that? You don't do that in SceneBuilder. You create parts, you create multiple FXML, and with few lines of codes, you are going to sequence your FXML and mainly replace the content of your theme. The stage, the window, uh, you can replace the scene of your stage at runtime. So it's really a straightforward to read. So just I want to show you the, the workflow. This is the first FXML done with the scene builder. I'm logging in. I go on to a second FXML that I've done, and I can log out and come back to the first one. 
So this is taken into, um, uh, this is, how to say, the application that deals with that. So I have one minute. I can't really start. Uh, perhaps I wanted to show you something that I have forgotten, actually. Um, you remember, I, in the charts, I have loaded my charts with sample data. But what you are going to do in real life, it's you are going to set FXID on your charts. And when your FXML file is loaded, you are going to fill them with some actual data. So I show you that in the chart controller class. So I have there my pie chart and line chart, the two charts I have used. Let's assume I have set an FXID on each of them. And if your controller class is implementing initializable, initializable is part of the FX runtime API, you will get a callback when load is done. So you have a post load, if you wish, a callback where you are initializing your content. And typically there, you will access to each chart uh, and whatever your application, go to your data provider, ask for uh, data for this chart, and set the data of this given chart. So this is very typical pattern you will use uh, <coughs> when feeding your charts or, or table or whatever. So thank you very much for um, for your uh, uh, presence and you have been, let me go at the end. Okay, if you have more information, go to javafx.com. We have a lot of documentation, log bugs, create your own account on JavaFX, um, Kinai, uh, create a Kinai project. There is a nice video done by Angela, one of my colleagues on YouTube. Uh, we have some demo on the booth, and tomorrow I have my uh, uh, general uh, session where I will present. I, I, uh, today I have been very quick at presenting you the FXID and the event handlers, so tomorrow I will take my time and I will cover the complete workflow on how to use an IDE, whatever your IDE, I will use NetBeans and SceneBuilder, and we'll show you with more, more time, more peaceful um, uh, presentation. Thank you.